James Jarko of Locked On Bucks says that Kirk Cousins will not be the reason the Atlanta Falcons win the NFC South, but Tony Wiggins of Locked On NFL tells you that he will be the reason Kyle Pitts is a breakout player in 2024. That and more coming up on this episode of Locked On NFL. You are Locked On NFL, your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome in, everybody, to this Friday episode of Locked On NFL, your daily podcast covering the National Football League, all part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Locked On NFL your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget that you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you're listening to this podcast. I am David Harrison. He is Tony Wiggins, credentialed members of the media and your host for Locked On Commanders and Locked On Jags, respectively, respectively, on top of being your Friday duo here at Locked On NFL, which is here with you every Monday through Friday, along with our everydayers and everydayers. We greatly appreciate your continued support for this show and your favorite Locked On programs. On today's episode, Micah Parsons, Dallas Cowboys, defensive end, linebacker, extraordinaire, whatever you want to call him and label him as, is causing some ruffle or ruffling some feathers with his teammates these days. There are Super Bowl windows open in cities that have never had Super Bowl windows celebrated before or had confetti falling from Super Bowl windows before. But we're going to start off this conversation with breakout players for the 2024 NFL season. And Wig, this is an interesting topic, and your pick is very interesting because I just did an NFC South catch-up series with the hosts of Locked On Bucks, Panthers, Saints, and Falcons. And James Jarko of Locked On Bucks doesn't get the Kirk Cousins hype around the Atlanta Falcons, why that makes them a better team. But you say that Kirk Cousins, whether it's NFC South title or not, or record and all that stuff, there's at least one player that's going to benefit greatly from the presence of their new quarterback. Yep, and I think his name is Kyle Pitts. Um, I got to give you some back history on this. So he played at Florida. Everybody knows that knows me knows I'm a Florida State fan. So I got accused of being biased when someone said, now get this, that when Pitts was in college, he was one of the five best tight ends in the world, regardless of level. And I said, you lost your mind. He's not. Because I have so much respect for the NFL and the craft. And you can never say that you can't look at a kid and say, okay, he's this compared to those guys. When those guys are playing against grown men every single week. Um, so far, he hasn't been a top five tight end in the NFL. Yeah. But I'm not going to sit here and and totally just smash out on him because I, I just don't think he's had a quarterback. And I don't think that, uh, well, he hasn't had a good quarterback. And Arthur Smith was terrible at using him and using B. John Robinson also. Yeah. So um, I do believe that Kirk, two things can be right at one time. Kirk Cousins might not lead Atlanta to the uh, AFC uh, title. But one thing Kirk Cousins has done is Kirk Cousins has put up numbers with some really, really good receivers over the years. And I think that's going to yep. continue here in Atlanta. Kyle Pitts is going to be opened up a little bit. And while he may never live up to being the guy that everyone thought that they thought he was the next coming to Shannon Sharp or somebody or like one of those Kelsey or Gronk type players, he might not ever get there, but he's going to be way better than what we've seen from him so far. Because what we've seen from him so far, he doesn't even deserve a second contract. If it, you know, I think they're going to bring it out of him. And I think he's going to play really, really well and put himself squarely into that top seven, top eight range. But um, so, you know, I, I was I was on him a little bit uh, earlier, but I have to admit when something isn't totally somebody's fault. And for Kyle Pitts, I think he's gotten a bad rap when it comes to the quarterback play. I think that's I think that's incredibly fair. I think what you just said there is incredibly fair about Kyle Pitts. And I think that a lot of times we in the exterior can can forget that the tight end position is is, an, is a largely dependent position. Like mm -hmm. the, the tight end needs the scheme to to work with his skill set. Then he needs the quarterback to find him in that scheme. And then he needs all that to come together. Only then can his actual talent actually come to fruition. And I remember watching tape of the Atlanta Falcons and quarterback Desmond Ritter in preparation for commander's games against the Falcons. And yeah, man, like what you see in Desmond Ritter, and, and I'm not trying to shade Desmond too, too much here, but you know, what you see in him is a quarterback who doesn't like throwing over the middle field. He's not confident throwing intermediate routes, which is Kyle Pitts wheelhouse. And he really only throws the vertical routes when it's like third and 13, third and 14, or it's really his only option. He's essentially told this is the pass you're going to throw. None of that sounds like it's going to fit. Kyle Pitts. And then, like you said, Arthur Smith just didn't really do a lot 
uh, to, to go out there and accentuate the talent on his roster and, and kept coming to the podium talking about, I don't care about your fantasy team. Well, brother, you might want to care about your real team because right. you're not using your playmakers, and that's why you're uh, out of a job there. So we're hopefully Raheem Morris is, and his staff is going to do that a little bit better because Kyle Pitts, I mean, whether whether you thought he should have been, you know, a high draft pick like he was, and and whether he was, I mean, nobody should be, no college player should be called like a top five of their position across all Ridiculous. levels. That's just not even fair. But right. you know, regardless, the tools were there, the talent was there, the physical ability certainly was there. It just has to be used properly. Um, I look at a defensive end like Kayvon Thibodeau in the same light. Year one, a lot of people had these super high expectations. Fifth overall pick. He got four and a half sacks. We were like, bro, you got fewer sacks and than, than the number you were picked at, all these other things. Year two, 11 and a half sacks in the second yep. season. 50 tackles, still not a super high tackle uh, amount, but you know what? The, you'll take the sack production and, and worry about the tackle production later. Um, this third season, I mean, it's kind of hard to say that 11 and a half sack dude from last year could be a breakout player this year because double digit sacks is good no matter what position, no matter how many years you've been in the NFL. But Kayvon Thibodeau wig, I think he could really take a big step this year. I'm talking like 15 sacks this year, potentially. And we talk about the dependence of players on other people. Kayvon Thibodeau already was playing with Dexter Lawrence in a super high blitz rate defense. Now the giants under, under new defense coordinator, Shane Bowen, are probably not going to blitz as much as they did under week Martindale. I think that's an easy thing to say, considering that week Martindale basically blitzes as much as you possibly can in the national. Mm-hmm. So that's going to impact things certainly, but you you draw down the blitz amount, you draw down the pass rush aggression, but then you add Brian Burns across the field. Kayvon Thibodeau is never going to get double teamed because teams no. are going to have to Dexter. They're going to have to double Brian Burns. So Kayvon, you're pretty much going to be out there by yourself, one on one with a tackle, maybe a tight end, maybe you get maybe you get a chip from a back or something like that. Kayvon Thibodeau this season should be able to eat. He should be a person that if you've got an individual defensive player in your fantasy league. You should be thinking about Kayvon. Typically, we go linebackers and safeties, high tackle volume, all that stuff. But Kayvon Thibodeau might get enough sacks to, to wipe out all the rest of those concerns. So Kayvon and Brian Burns, to me, they got to be they got to be on your on your on your draft board there. But Kayvon, I think, is the breakout player from that situation. Yeah, and Thibodeau, uh, talk about a narrative changer. Some of the pre-draft stuff that was said about that kid really, really got under my skin because he has actually turned out to be everything that some of those naysayers said that he wasn't. Like, he is dialed in. He gets all of this praise from the media. I know Patricia Trainer loves him to death from Locked on Giants. Yeah. Um, he gets a lot of praise from teammates about doing things the right way, and he's really bought in. He's in the building. Those are things that if you listen to people, that they thought he wasn't that guy. And um, mm-hmm. I think that's a bad rap to put on a player. Uh, when he uh, before he ever plays the game that somehow you think he's going to get money and all of a sudden he's going to turn into some kind of diva. He's been the total opposite, and that's good for him and good for the Giants. It is. It's not so good for the Washington Commanders. Sam Howell found that out last year the hard way. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, uh, Jaden Daniels will get to to have a better time of it. But like you said, Kayvon Thibodeau doing it the right way. A lot of people bought in. So, too, do the Houston Texans and the Detroit Lions. They've been doing things the right way as well, which is why they're two of the teams that we think who have Super Bowl windows opening up or open as we get ready to start the 2024 NFL season. That is coming up next on today's episode of Locked On NFL, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle, level it up to peak performance, superchargers, Roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Motors Guarantee Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Thanks again for being a Locked On NFL. Your first listener, your first view today and every day. Every day, or thanks for coming through like you do. Make sure you come back on Monday. Kevin Ostrak will be back with a whole new episode of Locked On NFL talking about the biggest stories. Speaking of the biggest stories, you can also check out Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel 
program to bring you the biggest sports stories across all sports. Can't miss analysis, opinions, news, all of it streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, all part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So if your favorite Locked On host took the 4th of July off, didn't drop an episode for you, it's okay. You can go to Locked On Sports today. Of course, you can come here to Locked On NFL, and we all hope that you had a happy and safe 4th of July celebration. Wig and I here working on the 4th of July for you, right. but we're going to go have our fun after we're done, I think. Right, Wig? We're going we're to yeah. have some fun after this. Talking about having fun. Super Bowl parades are fun. I heard the Boston Celtics NBA championship parade was actually kind of lame. Uh, a friend of mine was there, said it was not a good time. So that's disappointing. But Super Bowl parades tend to be a pretty good time. There are four teams in the NFL, right? If I, if my count is correct, there are four teams in the NFL wing that have never had a Super Bowl parade. And I hate to do this to you, brother, but Jacksonville Jaguars are one of them. Houston, yeah. Texas, Detroit Lions, Cleveland Browns. But at least the Jacksonville Jaguars aren't like the Cleveland Browns. I read this on ESPN, so credit to them. But the Cleveland Browns, they put this together, have more winless seasons Ooh. than they do in the last, I think it said 16 years. In the last 16 years, they have more winless seasons than they do division titles and Super Bowl champions combined. Jeez. That's, that's nuts. I think it was 16 years. Don't quote me on the years, but it's a long time. So this, this sparked a little bit of conversation. They at Locked on NFL earlier this week. I think it was Wednesday or Thursday episode talked about teams who have Super Bowl windows closing. So we want to talk about teams who have Super Bowl windows opened or opening. Wig, Houston Texans, Detroit Lions, two teams that have never won a Super Bowl, two teams who are their windows open in your eyes or are their windows opening in your eyes? I think it's open, but I'm going to include a team. The one I cover, Jacksonville, because if I don't, I'm going to get run <laughs> out of this city. One, because Houston is in the Jaguars division, and two, they are going to be measured against Detroit forever. Remember Trayvon mm-hmm. Walker, Aiden Hutchinson? I mean, they were side by side, you know, right there together. And they're going, we're going to always, at least here in Jacksonville, folks will always compare them to both of those teams. So I'll, I, for the sake of the argument, I'm going to include them so I don't get run out of the city. But the other part of it is I think you're absolutely right. Detroit. Uh, it's Super Bowl a bust for them, especially with them coming so close last year and actually outplaying the 49ers. They had a chance to really ruin the party and, and go and be in the Super Bowl and play against the Chiefs. And I know for a fact, if you think about Dan Campbell and how he's wired, of course he's looking forward to this season. But you can't tell me that that one doesn't hurt him, man. That's like having a, a, a splinter in your toe and you can't figure out exactly how to get it out. That's exactly what it must feel like. And the only way that they're going to ever get over that feeling is to go and do something that they have never done before, and that's actually get there. So um, I'm with you with both of them. And then, of course, with the young quarterback in Houston, he's a little he's a little chatty now. He, he, he's doing a little talking, but uh, you still yeah. can't you can't shake a stick at what he's done on the field and how they built that team, the, the momentum they have, and then the fact that they didn't rest. Um, like the Jaguars did in the previous season. They didn't rest in the offseason. They went out and added more talent and, and created yep. more competition. So I think you're tracking when you pick these two teams as teams that have their window open, but I'd also throw Jacksonville in there. Yeah, look, I mean, Jacksonville is certainly a team on the rise, you think? You know what I mean? They just inked their quarterback down. They just locked him down for a while. So you know, they can put that whole thing together. I, I certainly do see some promise with those two teams there, but I agree with you. I think the Detroit Lions clearly are in their Super Bowl window because, again, like you mentioned, they went to the NFC Championship game, jumped out to, what, a 16-17 point lead uh, before ultimately giving that up. Dan Campbell pretty much put that on his own shoulders, and, you know, the, there's a little bit of nervousness there. Right? I remember watching the Atlanta Falcons, and their their collapse in the postseason was worse than the Lions' collapse. Oh. One, because it came in the Super Bowl. Two, because it was a much bigger lead. But I remember watching that collapse, and I remember Wig telling people, man, the Falcons just need to blow this thing up. Like, you can't bounce back from that. Like, the way that that debacle unfolded, you can't bounce back from that. You need to blow it up, move forward, start this thing over again. They didn't. They never got back. You know what I mean? That's I'm not saying that proves me right necessarily, right? But uh, that's just kind of how things went with them. I really hope this Detroit Lions team does not suffer the same fate where a coaching decision or coaching decisions essentially are to blame for them not reaching the pinnacle of this sport. And you hope to be able to see them get back because like the Houston Texans, like you just mentioned, the Detroit Lions also not resting on their laurels, not sitting back saying we're an NFC championship caliber team already. No, they went out and they got, they got players. They got better in the secondary traded for a very aggressive man cover press coverage cornerback and Carlton Davis, the third from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So they went out and tried to make themselves better as well. Cause they see what the Vikings are trying to do. They see what the bears are trying to do. 
They see the Packers also being very competitive in the NFC North. If I got to if I got to add another team wig, that's probably who I would go about adding is a team like the Green Bay Packers. Who it's it's kind of weird to say because a lot of people were talking about maybe they should draft a quarterback, trade Jordan Love. They're 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 going to be doomed after Aaron Rodgers leaves. They don't have a number one wide receiver, but they got like four number twos who are high end number twos, maybe low end number ones. The Green Bay Packers might be a team that they're not in their window, but two or three years we might we might be looking uh, at another at the Green Bay Packers, a team that might be in their window. Then the, the new Houston Texans or Detroit Lions, as it were. How close do you think the Green Bay Packers might be to being in a new Super Bowl window? Because you know we're not all just sick of seeing the Packers competing anyway. Yeah, I think they're very, very close. And uh, shout out to them for not listening to all of the people that said the Jordan Love thing was the wrong thing to do. And uh, the, even more people said, you get rid of Aaron Rodgers for Jordan Love? Are you crazy? I I think 80% of the people that talked about that didn't give him a shot. And now Jordan Love's probably going to reset the market, the quarterback market a little bit whenever he resigns. They got a bunch of good wide receivers. Like Green Bay always finds wide receivers uh, after round one. And um, and I think they continued to work and try to build their defense. Kenny Clark is a hell of a player that doesn't get the credit that he deserves mm-hmm. because he does a lot of ugly work that doesn't, you know, that doesn't really excite people, but it, it, it's functionally helping that team get better. So, yeah, Green Bay, I, you know, why not? Why not? You know, they can win that division, I think, pretty easily right now. And then – um, when you get in the playoffs, man, you got a home game in Green Bay. Anything can happen, especially with a young quarterback who is really, really starting to to look like he's, yep. he's going to make a 30 year run at quarterback. Well, they're going to make it a 45 year run at quarterback. They just keep having one. So uh, that's a yeah. that's a very good call. Green Bay is another team. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy to think that the Green Bay Packers have had, like you said, 30 years of Hall of Fame quarterback play. Yeah, it's crazy. Only won two championships, though. When you think about it, 30 years of Hall of Fame quarterback play, only won two championships in that same window. Jordan Love, maybe he could make three, maybe he could be that third guy. Uh, would love it for Jordan Love, would not love it for the rest of the NFC North and, honestly, a lot of other NFL teams. But two other teams away that kind of have my interest, Pete, I think they've got shorter windows. The New York Jets, obviously Aaron Rodgers' new team, you know, missed pretty much all the last season except for four snaps due to that injury. They've got some talent. They've got a really good defense. It's Aaron Rodgers. As much as we all might think he's a little bit cuckoo for Coco Puss, the dude can can sling the ball. So if he can stay healthy, the Jets might be in like a one or two year Super Bowl window, not a long term thing. I also think the Miami Dolphins, like if they can catch, you know, lightning in a bottle, be healthier than everybody else. I know last year they didn't do great against teams that actually have playoff records, and that was a big bugaboo. But I think they've gotten more talented on offense, defensively. Christian Wilkins, we talked about that before here. That loss is going to be big, so we'll see how they go about replacing that. But there's no way, Wig, that they're going to keep this roster for the next 10 years because dudes are going to get priced out left and right here in about three, four years. But if they can catch lightning in a bottle within that three-year window, maybe they could get a Super Bowl. And honestly, bro, no, like right. Mike McDaniel, like who 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 would be a better and more entertaining head coach to see oh, yeah. do a Super Bowl winning speech than than that guy? So a yeah, lot of teams. Yeah, right. That's why the NFL is the NFL. That's why the NFL yeah. is the king, right? Because there's a lot of competition in the NFL every single year, even while the Kansas City Chiefs are trying to make history and win three Super Bowls for the first time in NFL history. Detroit's going to kill me because I said Green Bay was going to walk away with division. I forgot they got to play Green. They got to play Detroit. So it's those two teams. <laughs> and that's those are two games right now. If you gave me two games that I could watch this year in person, I watched Detroit play against Green Bay because th- that's going to be. So I had to put that in there before people say, man, how are you going to say they're just going to walk away with the division? I hear you. Let me let me get credentials for Packers Lions. I don't cover either team, but let me go in that right. press box in Lambeau for Packers Lions. That would be make it postseason too. That'd be that'd be a great. A great battle there. Uh, another team that's, that knows a thing or two about being competitive with the Dallas Cowboys. They haven't been able to reach the summit uh, in, in a long time, which most people are actually pretty happy about. Yesterday's episode of Locked On NFL talked about the Dallas Cowboys not being America's team anymore. So if you want more of that, go check that out. We're going to talk about a specific player who's causing some issues with the Cowboys. But internally, Micah Parsons ruffling some feathers in the locker room. That's coming up next on today's episode of Locked On NFL, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day if you are thinking about trying therapy this is for you today's show is sponsored and brought to you by better help better help can help you if you're looking for some therapy man i'm telling you i've had to use therapy for a lot of things uh, death in the family 
of losing friends, being displaced from my loved ones, trying to figure out how to use my time more wisely. All of those things can really affect you. And sometimes you just need someone else to talk to, to help you get back on track and figure things out. BetterHelp is the way uh, that I have chose to do it. And you can do the same thing. I have benefited from ther therapy moderately and I believe it can help you. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. Stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Final segment here on the uh, Locked On NFL podcast. Final segment of the weekend of the episode. And Wig, we got a doozy here. Micah Parsons, usually he's getting a lot of praise, but recently he got a little bit of criticism. Tell the good people about that story. All right. So his teammate, Malik Hooker, went on a um, podcast with Keyshawn Johnson. And um, he, he had some things to say and some things that I, I, I disagree with. And I disagree with the manner. Uh, in which he said it. Uh, it's the All Facts, No Breaks with Keyshawn Johnson. That's the podcast, so shout out to them. But he basically said that his advice, I'm going to quote, my advice for Michael would just be to make sure we're all right because if you're doing a podcast every week and you know the run game is terrible, then what are you caring about? Okay, I'll stop right there. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard and 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 for, for two reasons. One, um, people have other things that they do. You know, it's like, Folks were saying that Shaq couldn't hit free throws because he was rapping. Okay, so if he wasn't rapping, yeah. he was playing golf. Was was the golf going to be? Or what if he was just chilling on the beach with his girl? I mean, it's like you cannot be there all the time, right? So how does doing a podcast hurt the running game? I, I have no idea. Michael Parsons is an all pro. You mean you're going to actually question the one dude on the team that goes out there and plays like his hair and his feet are on fire every single week, and you're going to blame something like a podcast? The fact the podcast, look, I'm doing a podcast right now. Do you see me using a whole bunch of energy? Do you, I, I mean, I ain't sitting in the middle of a highway, right? Dodging cars or anything. Why do these guys, especially Malik Hooker is not on the level of Michael Parsons. One, why are you questioning him? Two, why are you doing it publicly in Keyshawn, on Keyshawn's show? And three, what the hell does him sitting behind a microphone and doing a podcast have to do with the run defense? I, I would think that um, what if we talk about that pass defense and, and what about you? What are you doing in your off? Time? What do you do in your off duty time? I'm sure doing a podcast is very low on the list of things that coaches don't want you doing on your own spare time. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Um, you know, he was a first round pick who busted in, in, in Indy. And got a second chance with Dallas and now he's sitting there bumping his gums and popping off about the dude that is actually the best player on the defense. So I thought it was clownish. I thought it was, uh, I think Michael Parsons says a lot of outrageous things sometimes on that podcast. And yeah. the thing about the pod, doing something like that and being so uh, vocal and so visible is this. When you're not winning, people will always point to that and say, yeah, maybe you need to do a little bit less of that. But in this case, it's like apples and oranges, man. It has absolutely nothing to do with stopping the run. And what do you mean, make sure we're okay? Why don't you make sure you're okay? Do y'all share paychecks? That's the, it, it, You make sure you're okay. What the hell are you last on the grown man to make sure we're okay while you're off doing your podcast? He makes it sound like, you know what it sounds like? It sounds like a bunch of kids ain't eating because their dad ain't bringing his paycheck home. He went down to the local saloon mm. and he's hanging out there all weekend. Man, just grow up and stop being a petulant child. That's what I would tell him if I was Michael Parsons. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's another pretty popular NFL player duo that uh, has a podcast. Well, one of them is retired now, but the Kelsey brothers have a podcast. Yeah. Jason and Travis. Yeah, that hurt them, didn't it? It hurt Travis them, Kelsey. Didn't it? I mean, the the New Heights podcast has two seasons under their belt. Travis Kelsey's got two Super Bowl rings in those two seasons of recording that podcast. So actually, I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, listen, this this pains me because Malik Hooker is an Ohio State guy, and and so so i never like to dog my ohio state guys but that's that's craziness and it's actually even more craziness than because fans will do this every once in a while right fans will see a player at a concert kicking back and joining in and saying man why are you getting that playbook or fans will see a player a quarterback just threw three interceptions on sunday on monday they're posting on instagram live playing call of duty with their friends and say man you need to go get in the backyard and throw more ball 
but fans can do that, right? Fan is short for fanatic. So you're you can be a fanatical. You can do that. That's that's part of the this territory. Malik Hooker's a player. Like you're a baller. And and the most ironic thing here, Wig, is he's doing this on a podcast. So he's on a podcast criticizing his teammate for doing a podcast. And, and granted, Malik Hooker, it's a it's a, an appearance. It's a one episode. I get it. But the uh, the irony of because if I I would really wish Keyshawn would have said, "Hey, Malik." What should you be doing right now? Right. Other than sitting here with me. But Keyshawn wants to have guests, so of course he's not going to say that to him. It's craziness, man. And it just reminds me of the video that Chris Cooley did once, former Washington Redskins tight end. He 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 was getting criticized for, for dropping passes or something like that. So he did this video where he's like at the grocery store with this helmet on, and then he's like reaching for the eggs, and somebody throws him a football, he's got to catch it. Or you know what I mean? He's he's, he's sitting in the bathroom using the toilet and he's got to reach out and catch a football. Like yep. like people expect football players to just be footballing 24-7. There is not a person on the planet that does their job 24-7. No. Nobody. You can't do that. If you did it, you need more than better help. Like you need more better help. I don't even know. Mm-hmm. Like you need a new company. It's insanity and it's more insane, like you said, because Malik Hooker is doing it. And then you add on the layers of he's your teammate. Like, bro, if you want to say this to him, say it to him say in the locker room. Say it to his face. Text say him. Say it to his face. Call him. Drive right. to his house. Don't say this to Keyshawn Johnson on a sinking podcast, man. So, because you know what? When they get back to training camp, guess what? Malik Hooker's going to have to talk about it. Michael Parsons is going to have to talk about it. Mike McCarthy might have to talk about it. Mike Zimmer might have to talk about it. Hell, Dak Prescott might have to talk about it. Do you think Michael Parsons is distracted on his podcast? It's craziness, and, and it's just the Dallas Cowboys already have enough drama around them. For yeah. Malik Hooker to be to be doing this, so to be popping off, you know, you know, in the old days, I don't condone violence, but in the old days, that'd get your lips swollen sitting there talking about what that mm. man's doing in this in this in his spare time. You know, I miss the old days a little bit, but that's a whole nother subject for another day. Yep. <laughs> Better hope Mike is not talking to Draymond Green out there with all that mess right. you're talking. Speaking of people talking mess, Tiki Barber decided to talk about Austin Eckler. If you want to hear my reaction to that. Check out Locked On Commanders. That was a fun conversation to have. But that's going to wrap it up here today on Locked On NFL. Coming up on Monday, Kevin Ostreger, Locked On Ravens, will be back. Uh, uh, what's his name? Mark Schlereth decided to go in on Lamar Jackson on fr- on Thursday. So maybe Kevin Ostreger will talk about that. More people just talking about stuff they probably shouldn't be talking about. But anyway, Locked On NFL will be back Monday. So make sure you check that out. Make sure you subscribe for your second listen of the day. Check out Locked On Jags. Check out Locked On Commanders or say right here, and check out Locked On Sports today. As always, thank you for making Locked On NFL your first listen of the day, every day, every day. Thanks for coming through like you do. For Tony Wiggins and David Harrison, we will see you back here next Friday for another episode of Locked On NFL, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.